What are you doing, Richard? I, well, you don't want to really know that, do you? <laughs> <laughs> that would bring you fucking down. <laughs> well, you know, the first thing I thought of when I um, heard I was going to get the chance to talk to you was, yeah. maybe he's got some tips for my anxiety. <laughs> Yeah, blow your fucking brains out. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> yeah, no, there's no help. There's no help in sight. Yeah. Are we are we going to be taping something? Well, I'm recording right now. Yeah, this is. Uh... Oh, beautiful. This that's great. Good. Uh, they'll blame me for twelve suicides. Hopefully, only wildlife listen to you. <laughs> no, anxiety. Anxiety is something that people try to or depression that you always see. You know. We're fighting depression. Everyone fights depression and anxiety. It's just, yeah. it's, it's like, you know, it's like I've been sober almost 20 years and I, I, every day I battle alcoholism. It's the same thing with a lot of the other things. You know, you're going to, it's a matter of moderating your depression and anxiety and trying to enjoy the good stuff because this life is a, it's, you know, can be tough, man. So, uh, so, you know, of course I haven't had experienced joy. I have, I've had bouts of happiness. Right. <laughs> but, uh, I, you know, the last time I was in, Par Paramount uh, in Portland was uh, almost a decade ago. I had written some book and it was on this murderous uh, TV, all uh, blitz media and bookstores everywhere. It was like for two months. I was so shot. But the last one was was Powell's, which I had heard about, of course. And I, you know, I get there. I'm like a rag, man. I'm just been on nonstop for eight weeks and doing concerts and TV shows and books. Uh, the books was, were fun, but you know, a lot of pressure. But you never know how many people are going to show up. And the publishers are clueless, generally. So uh, I, I just said, I was very grandiose, but it was, I walk around and, I, and they get me through the back door, blah, whatever. Uh, and they had pushed all the stalls back. It was standing room only. There clearly could have been, because I've done so many thousands of shows, clearly could have been, you know, six to eight hundred people there. And the publisher sent four books for me to, uh, to sign. <laughs> But, it, you know, and, and then, you know, you know the play, so when it says, you know, it looked like a theater. You know, I said, God, you know, I realized then I had never performed in Portland. I bet one of the reasons it was such a big turnout is because, you know, people want to know if I was, you know, a mammal or not, you know. Uh, you know, and I still do look like a mammal with, the, like, a, the posture of an aardvark behind me. <laughs> so this is my first gig this Friday and, and Saturday, first live show in Portland. So I'm really jazzed. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not that many cities left. No. You know, uh, there's a there's a small village in Afghanistan. I have a play there. <laughs> but of course, now the piece I'm doing on you is for San Francisco, though. Is it really? <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's for your San You're Francisco. You're kidding me. No, I'm not kidding. Oh, I just. Oh, this is so fucking hilarious. <laughs> Corey, I. No worries. I can't. Hold on, a, buddy. Keep that eye, doctor. <laughs> I canceled. This is all about. This is great. Corey, <laughs> this is about cops. That's cops, yes, cops, cops. Well, I'm in the middle of a tour, and I'm getting, <laughs> I'm in my 60s, and I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, you know I, I'm sober, but I'm a, I'm a mental case. So, you know, I, I just, I, I, Portland was horrible. Horrible. <laughs> Mountains, volcanoes, I, there was a dinosaur, uh, a happy hour, it was, forget it. <laughs> Get me back to, I've been playing in San Francisco. <laughs> I've been playing San Francisco every year for about 35 years, easily. Oh, yeah. yeah. And Cobbs, for sure. And um, I'm just going to do one show a night because, uh, you know, they don't want to have a, they didn't want to, the club didn't want to have a gurney between shows. Just in case I collapsed. <laughs> so uh, I love the club. I love San Francisco. I've had uh, the, the, uh, I just had more fun back in the day than any other city. And uh, look, it's one of the great cities in the world, and it's a beautiful venue. And uh, yeah. but if, when I only have to do one show, it's like a concert, right? And so it's a, it's a pretty big nightclub anyway. But when you do one show, I mean, I really always let it out. I mean, I really take my work seriously. And uh, whether it's Carnegie Hall or a nightclub or anywhere, you know, or you know, Portland. <laughs> Although, you know, Portland, I never left my hotel when I was kid. They said I could see, uh, from, they gave me a, a view of a mountain from my, in the bathroom. 
So if I open the window, I can see like, the tallest mountain in the world. I went. My only goal is to move my bowels. I could care less about. I couldn't care less about the, the, the tallest mountain. I said, you know, I have, I have stomach problems. Why should I care? And then what if volcano starts coming out? I was such a wreck. I always thought there was going to be molten lava on my on my new Converse before I got to the uh, the venue. But it was fun. But now, but now, but San Francisco is the end of the month, right? Help me here. Yes. Yes. It's. Um... Yeah, it's full you will next month. Next month. So this is yeah. pretty sad. It's that I'm asking you this, isn't it? That's okay. This is so, no, no. It, let's face it. Whoever listens to this is going. Oh, that poor bastard. <laughs> he doesn't even know where he is. He doesn't even know where he's going. And he doesn't even know who's interviewing him. And he doesn't even know for what. How bad can it get? <laughs> Death. No, you're a busy guy. It's no, no worries. Well, I just, I just, I am a busy guy. I'm, I'm on the heels of, of getting a, a four DVD box set together of films that have never been seen before on DVD that are really, really wonderful things that I always wanted out there. A movie I did for Saturday Night Live from the late 70s. And oh, yeah. yeah. Docu a documentary on my home, which is sort of a house of, that sort of, uh, I've had for 25 years, a real historic home that has, well, the documentary will speak for itself, and a couple other films, and uh, and then a, a book I'm doing with an, a New York artist that's going who's going to illustrate my darkness that should be coming. Uh, that should be so. That's good. I did a movie with uh, Aniston and uh, Owen Wilson and uh, legendary uh, Peter Bogdanovich uh, directed it, and I, I we wrapped that a few months ago. And uh, so, you know, I'm touring. Of course, I'm talking to you. I, you're from Finland, aren't you? Absolutely. Is this, is is this for the Finland gig? It is, it is, yeah. You know what it was? I was my uh, my trainer came over and uh, I, I had to work out a little bit or uh, a collapse. And uh, he, he likes the Olympics and hockey. And I said, fine. And Latvia was playing Kralmia. Uh, I you know I was fine. <laughs> but apparently, uh, uh, well, something happened. <laughs> something really bad. Uh, oh, I, I was watching the hockey and I got nauseated from watching the puck. <laughs> And, and, and that's what happens when you get you turn 60 and I have uh, you know you work out what he does is work he comes in he puts he makes a shape he puts on the Olympics and he mocks me and leaves and I give him $70 it's unbearable but my wife thinks I'm working out my wife I mean, uh, my wife is so embarrassed. And, I mean, she, she loves me. She accepts me. I have the greatest wife for myself and uh, in the world. But, you know, when she turns the lights out when I come into the bedroom naked, that's a bad sign. That's not good. The end. That's not good. She's humiliated. I said, who's watching us? She said, well, you never know. You know, so for now, GMT. You know. <laughs> no, that's going to be a nice box you're putting together, though. The box set's going to be great, and I and I think uh, well, I can't mention the other two. Well, no, well, Magical Misery Tour is on the bottom line, which is no longer there, and Diary of a Young Comic Saturday Night Live, the documentary of my home, which really basically has everything in it from 1970 through now through this. And if I get, I would frame this interview of how moronic I was, thinking that you know, I'm talking to you know, you know, and I and I kid the Eskimos. <laughs> I might as well have been talking to uh, you know, you know Sarah Palin's uh, you know you know uh, you know book club. Does she have a book club? <laughs> Unlikely. It might be a pamphlet. Yeah. Huh? Probably a pamphlet. Yeah, club. A, a coloring book club. <laughs> Good night, everybody. See you at midnight. Enjoy the meal. <laughs> yeah. No, I was. Uh, yeah. That was one of the worst things in my. And I'm pretty active politically and pretty progressive uh, on almost all fronts, but. You know, what really bugged me more than almost any that in recollection was when uh, when he chose her to be, a, you know, as they say, a heartbeat away from being the president. Yeah. That was one of the most, just to make the election close, that, you know, that senator, you know, that war hero, which he is, and all of that, all the good things, the maverick. The maverick went out the window when he uh, when he took somebody who, you know, could see Russia from her, you know, from her living sofa. Right. So, that's when I said, you know, can you just imagine? I mean, poor, I mean President Bush, you know, was, uh, you know, not exactly, you know, uh, and Mensa, you know what I mean? But uh, this would have set all records for mistakes, you know. Oh, man. You know, they, they could just think of, I mean, forget the only one who would have, we, we would have gone down and Saturday Night Live would have been, them and the cockroaches would have stayed, would have been left. Right. SNL and cockroaches if she became president. Yes. But we're, you know, but I, you know, 
Well, I kid the, the governor. I kid her. <laughs> and, uh, and she has a great wardrobe and, you know, and a lot of, you know, a lot of the Tea Party people find her very attractive. It's just still a Tea Party. You should just, you know, you know, it's not over already. Don't they, don't they know that they, they can't elect anybody? That's, that's the thing that's so rotten is that they can elect people in the, you know, in the Congress and stop, you know, every kind of civil right there. And it's just unbearable. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, you know, I talk about, I, I, you know, there's nothing I can really do about it except talk about it and feel like I'm, a, you know, a, a true American. A true American is someone who cares about, well, this is the problem. It's hard, you know, imagine being president and realizing that, you know, 20 or 30 percent of the people are anti-Semitic and racist and you and you are the president of the entire country. Right. It's, you know, it's tough. It's, a, you know, it's, uh, I, I wouldn't care. You know, I'd like to live and see a Jewish president. Yeah. Although I'm not Orthodox, so if you know if the bomb was coming and it was you know, you know it was Friday night dinner. You know, listen, I'm lighting the candles. I can't. <laughs> you know, hopefully uh, you can wait till Saturday to do something. I, I can't work. You know, it's a Sabbath. What do you want from me? <laughs> that could be a you know the the Tea Party will really hammer that at. The bomb is coming from Iran, but the President Horowitz is making latkes. <laughs> oh, God. You should uh, really, uh, this is one of the most fun interviews I've had for a couple of reasons. Two, I have no idea where, what we're doing. And two, I, I forgot that th I was playing San Francisco. And three, uh, I, uh, you know, this is going to either put you on, this is going to go viral or you're out of the business. <laughs> right, whatever it is. I, 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 well, you know, I don't care. You know, we'll, we'll no, you, I'm, I'm 66. I don't give a fuck what happens. <laughs> right, right. I'm just like, when I wake up in the morning, I open my eyes, ask my I say, Joyce, are the eyes open? <laughs> That's basically it. Right. I've turned into Don Rickles. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> are the eyes open? I asked the wife, are the eyes open? <laughs> I can't believe this shit. <laughs> you know, I hang out with, you know, rock stars, and they're, and they're in their 60s, you know. Yeah. Beatles, you know, Ringo and Joe Wall, these guys, you know. I mean, I'm friends with a lot of, you know, Springsteen, and we're all, it's so we're through. <laughs> so you got to come to, you know, you, I don't know how often I'm, I mean, I've been coming to San Francisco ever since the uh, early 70s, but, you know, you got to come to Cobbs. If you're hearing this, and you realize that I'm on the verge of a nervous breakdown, you must come to God. Absolutely, absolutely. It's not just to hear the Jimi Hendrix music I play when the doors open. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's your relationship like, been like with comedy club staffs like, in your years of sobriety? Like, how has that changed from the old days to, to now? Well, let me just say this. Uh, I have a tremendous disdain for 95% of club owners and promoters. Yeah. And for good reason. They've ripped me off in every other act. There's a handful of good owners and good promoters. Yeah. And I wouldn't be coming back to, to some similar places and venues if, you know, like Cobbs, if I was treated poorly. Sure, sure. But in general, the sobriety has nothing to do with it. I might have let them, I might have really acted out more when I was an active drunk yeah. and drug addict. But I mean, uh, you know, I remember one club, one guy, I was sober, and it was in Texas. And it was, you know, they were all right-wing evangelicals. It was cool, man. You know, I just would talk about it on stage, and I did. Well, <laughs> of course. Well, anyway, so I got a standing ovation, but it was, it never stopped. It was just one of the, I was in a zone. It was one of those shows I connected, and it was sold out. So the club owner made a fortune. This is this is very economical way of describing how you you can't impress an owner or a buyer because that means the agent will have to ask for more money, right. basically the next time around. So they'll never praise you. In fact, they can call your agent. God, he vomited on. You know, you don't know what they say to your agent. And if your agent hears that, he's not going to call you. So, what do you mean you threw up after every punch? You know, they, so you never know what report you get. And if you do great, they lie. Most of them. Yeah. Because there's nothing in it for them to go, we love Richard. He did a million interviews. He's so loud most of the shows. The shows are unbelievable. That you're not going to get. Right. Why? Unless, you know, they're Gandhi's nephew, you know. <laughs> so what finally happened was, um, what finally happened was, um, 
Uh, oh, so the guy, the guy is in the back, the club owner, and these, these evangelical, wonderful audience members were leaving their seats and like the stigmata to touch me. You know, they they were trying to touch my skin. I was the Lord for that hour. <laughs> I'm not, I know this sounds really arrogant, and other, but I'm telling you the truth. And I was freaked out. I didn't know because they were walking to me and touching me. It was unbelievable. So I, I get to the, and I knew there has never been anything like this. Yeah. I mean, I had never seen anything. And this owner couldn't, you know, the night before he had, you know, you know, he had a transsexual puppet show act. I mean, how, you know, this wouldn't have happened. Although I like transsexual puppets, don't get me wrong. Not in Portland. No. I get in the Bay Area. That's right. <laughs> I mean, you can't get enough transvestite puppets. In fact, there should be more transvestite puppet acts. They'd be hilarious. Probably are. But at any rate, here's the deal. Like, he drops me off at my hotel after the, you know, the entire club, 300 people touched me as the Christ, basically, I guess. I mean, is that it? They made me Christ. And here's what he said to me. He says... We'll, this is a direct quote. We'll try to have you back. <laughs> now, had I been drugged out of my mind, first I wouldn't have done a, that kind of show. But if I had I been had a couple of drinks after and that happened or whatever, I would have dove into the car and I would have. I, I might have. I'd be, I'd be in jail now. I would have. I probably would have murdered the guy <laughs> because they're so full of it. <laughs> but uh, you know, and there's a lot of them. And. Uh, and you know the agent said, so "Once you once you land and you're on your own, you know, you know, you know." You say, "Hey, there's no there's no dressing room. They they're, you know, they're making me stay at his nephew's house, who just came out of prison. He's a pedophile." <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what you contend with. You know, and now, even though I've been around a long time, and I, you know, I, you know, I'm me. You know, I mean, I say that now because you know I, I've earned the right to be me. Right. I, you know, with my, uh, it doesn't matter. They don't care. They don't care. They just care about money. Right. right. And um, but you know, there's I, I have a I, I have a community of promoters and clubs like Cubs that uh, I make sure that you know at least I tell the agent you know I'm gonna I want to play I like to play it this year you know and most of this like Chicago, San Francisco, New York, and I um, mean you know, Portland of course and uh, um, Seattle and those are really cool cities too. I mean they really are. I mean for a city guy it's frightening. You know, I mean, even the room service guy in Portland was jogging through the hall. I said, how do you even hold the, the soup? He said, no, I know how to do it. He said, I, I ordered chicken soup, and he's running through the hall with my chicken soup. <laughs> and then I said, hey, this is so fresh. He said, we just killed the chicken. <laughs> this, apparently, there was a farm attached to the hotel. Hey, I'm glad I'm coming to San Francisco. What can I tell you? You know, jogging room service guys freaked out a Jewish boy from Brooklyn. Let me just tell you that. <laughs> you know, I, give me, give me. You know, once I was on um, one of the uh, papers in San Francisco, it was Gay Pride Week. Yeah. And they, and I'm straight, but it, you know, I'm a, you know, and, but I was on the cover of of the uh, of the Independent. Uh, it's a great paper. I can't just can't. I'm blanking, obviously. But it was just such, I framed it to my house. It's just so wonderful because it had all the events on Gay Pride Week around my glossy. <laughs> as if I was the, you know. Like the headliner. Huh? Yeah. I was the headliner. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, and I, you know, and I felt obligated to go to Gay Pride, to go to go, go to the parade. <laughs> of course. I mean, I'm on the cover of the magazine. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't the advocate. I'm in your shoes. It was, you know, the independent paper in San Francisco. And I... And I was the, you know, but it was like I was the uh, ringmaster. <laughs> don't forget to see this. Don't forget, don't forget the naked drugstore on, uh, you know. Well, they're probably uh, advertising the puppet show. I would huh? The puppet show was probably. In I, I, I know. I'm all, I'm all for gay puppet show. I'm all for. I'm, I, look, I'm a progressive. You know what I'm talking sure, about. Sure. Yeah, I drift, but I'm just, uh, I'm just sorry that I ruined your career. That's okay. <laughs> where, where, where am I ever going to hear this? Do I have to wait till I get in prison? Is there a prison circuit for this? No, this is for the uh, this is for the NBC. Uh, I'm sorry, the NBC. Uh, You're people. kidding me. No. This is for the NBC radio affiliate. <laughs> the well, no, the well, the NBC uh, site for the Bay Area. Oh God, I love NBC. <laughs> yeah. I kid, I kid the peacock. That's right. I actually.
actually have a peacock, and he's gay, I might add. <laughs> but yes, I have a gay peacock. Perfect. <laughs> I mean, first of all, if you're going to dress like that, if you're not gay, get out of town. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You know how beautiful these, they might, you know, uh, his name is Larry, and he's gay. I just know he's gay. I just feel he's just so he's sensitive and nice, and he's kind to my wife. And <laughs> he goes shopping with my wife. I don't. <laughs> that was the tell. Yeah. When your pet says, no, I'll go with it. Yeah. Call, call, I'll go with it. Call, I'll go with it. You have no patience. Call. You're too straight for shopping. Call. She needs a gay man to go with it. Call. Right. So she goes to like, you know, when she goes shopping, she's like, she brings the bird with her. You mentioned Rickles before, and I don't know if you saw Mel Brooks last night on uh, Conan, but he was taught, you know, they were doing a tribute to Sid Caesar. Um, oh, I wish I would have known. I, I spoke at Sid's funeral two days ago, and Mel was on after me. Yeah, I didn't say, oh, rats, I'll try to catch it. Who was on? Who was on? Uh, Mel and who else? I just caught the Mel part. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. It was very sad. I mean, I... He died at 91, this, this, and I tweeted about it. The, peep, the thing that really is sad about it, that the guy was like a, a method, like a Brando sketch act that no one could, as, can ever be that good. I mean, it was four and a half, four or five years, hour and a half, I guess, I know, but he had you know, the greatest his, the greatest writing room, and he had an amazing ensemble. But you have to go on YouTube. you got to get the DVDs. you got to see. People have to see. Anyone under 50 is clueless about it. Yeah. And, uh, in fact, I think someone had sent me a headline in Huffington Post. Someone said, Sid Caesar dies was the football coach in Greece. <laughs> okay, oh, no. so oh, it's like saying Charlie Chaplin died. <laughs> uh, he was an ice cream man. <laughs> right. You know, it was unbelievable. And uh, so, I mean, for people who are hearing this, and you're, and you're young, and you're obviously one even close to being born, this was the greatest sketch comedian of all time. And we had a lot of demons. He fought them. I was no great to he was great to me and uh just you know just wikipedia at least and uh and go on youtube see some of the sketches i mean and maybe the single greatest sketch of all is it was a takeoff on a show this is your life but they would find a celebrity and they'd surprise him and uh and uh, there's a there's a sketch a, a takeoff on this is your life Sid Caesar, you can get on youtube and you'll see it's astonishingly funny, but all of it, he, he was something. I was very proud to be asked to even speak. Billy, Billy was there. Crystal was very nice to sit as well. And um, yeah, it was very moving. Absolutely. Very moving. Yeah, yeah. Well, just, you know, and seeing Mel on that show last night got me thinking that, um, uh, you know, about his stuff, because I, I talked to him about a year ago, and he's just, I mean, you know, talk about... Oh, God. You know, yeah. So, but... He's one but of the great ones that you were... Him. Street. That you made a, f a movie with him. What was it like being directed by Mel? I mean, just. Well, I was directing him more because he, he, the movie before his didn't do as well, that well. So it turns out Robert and Men in Tights didn't get great reviews. It turned out to be a cult hit, yeah. number one, all over the world. One of the biggest, if not the biggest selling Mel Brooks movie of all time. Understandably, because children love it and get it, you know. I mean, it, his masterpiece to me is Young Frankenstein, and it's a little too sophisticated for, you know, teens, even you know, younger than that. But everyone, you know, five-year-olds are, are looking at, see me in a mall and go, where's your mall? You know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, Working with him, I mean, if he would, it, would, it was really hot, 100 degrees outside, and I would, if he, if he was getting a little weak or something, I would sneak behind him and I'd set him up with a 2,000-year-old man premise, and he would do the whole bit, and <laughs> everyone would be laughing. Listen, he called me up, he said, show my Prince John, and that's it. And now, I, I, what am I going to do? <laughs> I mean, I, it was, I couldn't even negotiate the salary. You know, it was a, he, 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 he frightened me, frightened my agent. <laughs> but I was, I did come down with hepatitis A from, from a restaurant here, oh. and I had to miss a scene with the dearly departed Dom DeLuise doing a Marlon Brando impression, which is beyond great, and with the sheriff, Roger Reese, who's just a brilliant English actor, uh, as a sheriff, who was unbelievable. They, the whole cast was fun, yeah, but you know, it was a good cast, and it was fun, and it was, um, but I couldn't make it to... Uh, the last scene, and luckily I had shot everything, but I was, I had 105 fever and I was jaundiced. And Mel called me at Cedar sinai 
15 times to try to get me to do the scene. And I had two, one line in the scene, but he wanted me there with the sheriff of rotting him. I went, Bell, I'm showing this. I can't move. I have 106. I have hepatitis A. He says, that's okay. We're gonna, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to come in with makeup and paint you. No one will know you're joining us. We're going to carry you down the stairs into a sedan or a limo. And we'll put you, lean you up against a board so you won't be weak. We'll keep painting you so the joiners won't show. You'll do your line and we'll put you back in the stretch and take your, you'll be at Cedars in an hour. And I kept hanging up on him. He kept calling my room. And then he had the producer call me. We have to have you. I get you don't get it. I'm, I think I'm dying. And he kept, he didn't care. And then my doctor called. He says he's not leaving the hospital. And that was it. But he would not, you know, you know, once you sign on to a production, you are a slave to the production. It's, you know, luckily, I was done with the movie, except for, I said, Mel, the, the, you know, the sheriff of Rottingham could say, and what are you going to do? <laughs> I just let him say that. I'm near death. He says, no, no, we have to have you. You're, uh, you're the Prince John. It was unbelievable. But that's Mel Brooks. He's uh, you know, one of the great humorists in history and one of the great wordsmiths of all time. That's for sure. <laughs> now, I've heard you say that you don't do impressions, and that was a pretty good Mel. Well, uh, I, 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 well, I, 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 I could do Mel. I could do a good Mel. I do, uh, you see, he has that meter. First of all, he's a great, his premises are genius. Yeah. yeah but when you have, like, Woody Allen's meter, or, uh, like, John, uh, even, uh, uh, oh God! Uh, oh, he's a, he used to be a rabbi. Is uh, uh, right now. I'll tell you, Jackie Mason. Jackie, yeah, yeah. Jackie Mason has maybe the greatest rhythm. Rodney had great jokes, but uh, but Jackie Mason, if he if he, he could literally probably go on stage, why should I wear a jacket? I'm, are you listening to me? I don't want to wear a jacket. There's no reason to wear a jacket. There's no clothes to wear a jacket. He could start talking like that. Uh, that wasn't particularly funny, but I'm saying he could start talking without having even any premises. He has brilliant stuff to boot, you know. These and and Woody, you know, uh, you know, with his inflection, you know. Then you couple that with you know with with amazing one-liners, you know, it doesn't get much better. It does no. you know, that's the top of the line. But you know, not to you know your stuff. I think and your style. I think is. is uh... I've enjoyed it since I was a kid. It's just, it, it seems like you're just, like, comedy without a net. And it's, you know, I don't know, it's just something well, I can watch you on stage. Well, I, I have no act. I have about 40 hours of material. I bring about five new hours with me. And if something pops in that I've said before, then I try to go a whole other way with it. It's not for everybody. Never has. I never wanted to be for everybody. You know, you know, I, I prefer to be the John Cassavetes of stand up. <laughs> but I mean, you know, people expect me to hear, you know, you know, you know. Hey, I tell you, it was so cold. You know, I saw a reindeer wearing a muffler. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? I rather, I rather, you know, I rather hang myself. <laughs> I mean, and you can still do good observational humor. I hate it. Yeah. I hate observational. I rather, I like. Twisted, sick bastards on stage. <laughs> you know, recovering drunks and drug addicts. We're trying to figure it out, and there's plenty of us, <laughs> and I'm one of them. So, uh, if you want to hear me figure out my life, come to Cobb's. I'm doing four shows, and then I'm out of there. <laughs> and uh, if you want to go to Portland, I'd stay away from the volcano. <laughs> and I, and if you want to, I, I will try to put on Twitter my gay peacock. Please. Helps my wife shop. Please do, please do. And uh, I will probably have to go to a neurologist now, considering the first ten minutes of this, I thought I was talking to <laughs> a guy from Portland who raised yaks. <laughs> That's okay, but you know, on the on the good note, you've uh, I was having kind of an anxious day, and, and all that anxiety has kind of slipped away for this half an hour. Well, I I was put on this earth for that reason. Yeah, I'm sort of the messiah of anxiety. I'm going to have to touch you. You don't have to worry. <laughs> I see. Yeah. That's maybe well, why they want to put their hands on you. Yeah. Only happens in Texas, Jack. That's <laughs> it. They don't touch anywhere else unless they want to have sex. <laughs> and right now, my member is, uh, has one club, one member, my wife, and, and she's, uh, I'll try again! <laughs> uh, anyway, I have to run to the doctor, believe it or not. No, I believe Thanks it. For the, 
Thanks for the interview. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. No, no, I appreciate it. There's nothing worse than being in here, walking around San Francisco. What are you doing here? Uh, what am I doing here? I, you know, you're helping people know, hopefully, that I'm around. Absolutely. Uh, not, yeah, and I've never had the opportunity to see you live before. I've you know, watched you for years on on specials, but uh, it'll be a, a nice treat just get to see it. Well, hopefully, every set's different. It's up to the audience. I, I know that sounds like a cop, but if they're with me and go with me, I have a blast. If, if, you know, if they don't get it, well, they will. They know what to expect yeah. from me now. So, uh, yeah, but every show is great, is different, and uh, I hope you I hope you see a good set. And uh, But I promise everyone there, I mean, I leave it on the floor. I mean, once I leave, people either, you know, want to touch me, as the Lord, or find where I'm staying. <laughs> so you get my drift. Get anyway, best of luck to you and have a have a you, you know and have a and continued success. I appreciate. It. Thank you, Richard. All right, I'll, all right, I'll see you in Portland. All right. <laughs>